Right now she's in debate prep. I don't know. This is Saturday. That's going to be Wednesday. If you got to study all that, you're supposed to know this stuff. It's a little challenging debating someone <laughs> like that. He, he seems remarkably unacquainted with the truth. Both candidates revving up their bases as Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton get ready for the third and final presidential debate here in Las Vegas. It's time now for our Sunday group. Charles Hurt, political columnist for The Washington Times. Fox News correspondent Jennifer Griffin, who's covering the Clinton campaign. Monica Crowley, editor and columnist for The Washington Times. And Democratic strategist Joe Trippi. Jen, I want to start with you. Um, first of all, we put up a Washington Post ABC poll earlier. That's pretty tight, four points. But the NBC Wall Street Journal poll just came out uh, just moments ago, and it is at 11 points uh, nationally. Uh, two different polls, two different results. Uh, the average of polls has been around 5%. Five, 5%. Five what are you seeing on the trail there and the concerns in the Clinton campaign of what they're hearing? Well, they're not really concerned because they're looking at battleground state polls. And what they're seeing in Florida, Ohio, and North Carolina in terms of early voting, what's interesting is that they have a record number of early ballots, particularly from Hispanics, in Florida. One in three early ballots have been, respect, uh, have been uh, uh, requested by Hispanics. And so they're looking at those battleground states. They say in Ohio, Robbie Mook, the campaign manager, had all the analytics. He said there are one million early uh, ballots that have already been cast mostly in the Cuyahoga and Franklin counties, which are favorable to Democrats. For all their confidence, Charlie, there is still this sense that, um, you know, if Donald Trump has a bad week, he's still kind of hanging around. Yeah, I mean, five points or 11 points. After what Donald Trump has been through in the past two weeks, uh, it, it is the worst uh, media maelstrom uh, in the history of television, I think, for a, for a political candidate. And the fact that he is still anywhere remotely in, within striking distance of Hillary Clinton, I think, uh, suggests that he's still in it. He still has a, a chance. And the question is, does he uh, buckle down, focus on the issues, and stick with that stuff instead of going off on tangents? You know, uh, Joe, you, you saw Mike Pence, and he's been answering these questions about the allegations. Um, I didn't go down the road too far, but, I mean, you have to think he's wincing on some of these answers or some of this campaigning about um, the accusers. Well, he has to be because part of the whole problem, one of the difference in, these, in the polling numbers is women, and, and they've moved away from Trump. Even, even groups uh, that tend to be Republican uh, with women, uh, uh, moderate Republican women are moving away. Um, and so this isn't how you, you get them back. They're gettable because they've been voting Republican all these years, so, and, it, and they've got arguments. But the argument isn't to go after the accusers. So I, I think this is a, that's what I think is going to be interesting about this debate is, is that the Donald Trump that shows up that goes after the accusers and put, keeps, keeps giving Clinton this advantage or does he try to reach out to them? That's what I think is going to be the key. Monica. Well, I think it's astonishing that throughout this, this campaign, this man who has never done this before, who still has a skeletal campaign and relatively little money compared to the $2 billion that Mrs. Clinton will be bringing to bear throughout this campaign, is still in this race. And particularly after the last two weeks where he has gotten hit, and hit time and time again, the fact that he's still standing tells me that this is still possible for him, despite what we're seeing in the polling battleground states and nationally. And that's because he's got He's got the majority of voters with him on the core issues, economic growth, job creation, enforcing the border, dealing with illegal immigration, dealing with the existential threat of Islamic terror. So he's got the voters with him on the issues. If he can dispense with um, the, the latest scandal about the groping allegations quickly and forcefully in this debate and then pivot to prosecute prosecuting the case against Mrs. Clinton and her record, and then promoting his own po positive agenda, he will reset this campaign. I think the, the question is over the bar of commander-in-chief and whether he got there throughout this process as of yet. You know, every, every debate there's that question. Jen, um, you know, Trump supporters say, look at these crowds. These crowds are huge in Donald Trump parlance. Um, what about the Hillary Clinton crowds? 
Well, we saw a little bit of a change this week. You're right, the crowds have been relatively small, um, 1,500 perhaps at each of the events. But we saw in Ohio, when she opened up the space, there were 18,000 plus people who came out on Ohio State University. The real concern of the Clinton campaign is that the campaign gets so ugly and that the rhetoric gets so um, so negative that people decide to sit out. So that is why you see Michelle Obama and President Obama out on the trail saying, this matters, um, make sure you come up, you show up and vote. Yeah, I mean, clearly Trump's crowds, though, Charlie, have been a lot bigger overall, uh, 20,000, 30,000. The question is his enthusiasm. Yeah. Is, it, is it on his side, even after all this kind of bad no, stuff? No, I, th I think he's lost a lot of it, and I think that's, I, I think that's where the, uh, that the past couple of weeks with the media uh, hitting him on, on all of this stuff has, has really hurt him is just with the enthusiasm. But like I think Monica said, I think, you know, he can get it back if he just, if he delivers a great uh, debate performance, talks about the issues and, 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 you know, gets over trying to hit back on everybody. Quickly, Joe, when you look at the polls and, and again, this is from the Trump campaign perspective that they say it could shift, you know, it could shift or it's underreported. How many points is could it potentially be underreported? I, I don't think much. I, I don't think we're seeing that. I, I mean, I think this is one of the things. A lot of difference in these polls is just how do you project what's going to turn out, who's going to turn out, and so I think that the Trump uh, campaign has decided to energize its base and to make sure they vote. I'm not sure there's enough of them, and that's why he's got to try to reach out to women and some of these people that have been pushed away. But that's what this debate's going to be about, I think. Addition. Panel, we'll see you. We'll take a break uh, right here. We'll see you a bit later.